The single most important tool that you can take with you into the woods next to a metal container like a water bottle or a pot is going to be a good quality sheath or belt knife. While researching bushcraft and survival knives, I found out a lot about the hows and whys of bushcraft and survival knife selection. Throughout this video, I'm going to help guide you through bushcraft and survival knife selection and explain how stainless steel differs from high carbon steel knives and hopefully give you a broader understanding of what a bushcraft and survival knife is and is not. Let's jump right in. When it comes to bushcraft and survival, you always want to think of redundancy, or simply put, every item you carry needs to serve more than one purpose. Knives are no exception. You always want to carry more than one knife. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you an idea of what else you could carry to make your survival or bushcrafting even easier. Your knife is going to be the single most used tool that you bring with you in the outdoors. From cleaning fish and wild game to splitting firewood and starting fires, a good quality knife will be able to cut down small diameter trees and carve up any bushcraft or survival projects that you can conjure up. Your main knife should be made of a high quality stainless steel or high carbon steel. Let's break this down and find out what it means and why or how do they differ. When selecting your knife, there are basically two types of metal to choose from. There's stainless steel and then there's high carbon steel. Keep in mind that all steel has some degree of carbon added to it to make it stronger. Without turning this into a chemistry class, all steel has some degree of carbon in the makeup, but the main differences are stainless steel is more malleable and less brittle than carbon steel. Stainless steel has a metallic element called chromium, which is added to it that gives stainless its anti-corrosive and tarnish resistant finish, which gives it that highly polished shine. High carbon steel knives are harder and stronger, but they are more brittle and prone to chipping and cracking, especially during the cold weather months. However, it's also more prone to rusting and it does not hold an edge as long as stainless steel. And now that you know this, you might ask yourself, why would you select a carbon steel knife? High carbon steel is superior at starting fires with a ferro rod, and it's less prone to blade warping when splitting firewood or cutting small trees. Here are the benefits between these two blades. Stainless steel is more flexible, it's resistant to rust, and it's less brittle. High carbon steel is stronger, superior fire starter, and easier to sharpen. Your knife is gonna go through tons of abuse when practicing bushcraft and survival. So when it comes to knife selection, you want to consider the tang of the knife. What is a knife tang? The tang is essentially part of the knife blade that extends into the knife handle. There are many types of knife tangs, but we are only gonna concentrate on just two of the most common types, the full tang and the partial tang. A partial tang of various sorts does not protrude through the entire handle of the knife. This makes the knife weak and subject to breakage, especially when using your knife to split firewood or other types of heavy usage such as prying. A full tang knife refers to the blade protruding all the way through the handle of the knife. The handles, which are called scales, are affixed to the knife tang, and the full tang knife is much stronger and will withstand much more abuse than a partial tang knife. Now that we know what materials to choose from and have selected our tang, now we need to decide on the type of grind. The grind is exactly as it sounds. The edge of the knife is ground down to make a razor sharp edge for all of your cutting. Most people consider the type of tang over the grind and the grind of the knife is usually overlooked. The grind is very important as well. Depending on what you're using your knife for, when it comes to bushcraft and survival, there usually are four different grinds most popularly used. There's the convex, the Scandinavian or Scandi, the flat, or the hollow. The Scandinavian or Scandi and flat grind are basically the most traditional blade grinds for bushcrafters and survivalists. These grinds are very easily sharpened in the field and are great for carving and woodworking. In order to keep it simple for this video, we're only going to concentrate on these two grinds. The different type of grind actually affects the way your knife cuts, but for the basic bushcrafter and basic survivalist, like I stated before, we are only going to concentrate on the Scandi and flat. And the reason why is because it's easier to sharpen in the field and maintain a good edge on your tool. One more important aspect of knife selection is your knife needs to have a sharp 90 degree spine. Many new flashy knives have stylistic ridges on the spine that really serve no purpose other than a thumb grip. These ridges hinder you from using the spine of your blade to stroke a ferro rod or making fine shaving for fire tender. 
A lot of your high carbon steel knives now come with a powder coating in order to keep them from rusting. You don't have to have a powder coating on your knife blade. It is easy enough to maintain your knife in the field and keep it from rusting yourself. That's why I always use the catchphrase, I'm going to use my trusty but not rusty knife. This powder coating actually hinders you from being able to start a fire with a fair rod. A very sharp 90 degree spine is going to allow you to scrape wood shavings. It's also going to allow you to scrape your fair rod in order to start your fire. And there are so many more uses that a 90 degree spine can be used for and having a powder coating on it will not be conducive to some bushcraft and survival projects that you'll be conducting in the field. Let's recap. We selected the type of metal we wanted in a knife. We chose the tang for our intended purpose. We selected the grind of our blade to suit the bushcrafting and survival needs. And this leaves us with another question. How long should your bushcraft or survival knife be? Well, that depends on your intended purpose. I have found that between four and five inches is the perfect length of a knife blade. Now you want this knife blade to be relatively thick, usually an eighth of an inch or more, and you want it to be between four and five inches long. That way you could process wood for your fire with your knife. There are some bushcrafters and survivalists out there that frown upon using your knife to split wood, but sometimes the only way that you can do it is with your knife. This puts a lot of stress on your knife for sure and it causes you to have to sharpen your knife more often. Like I said before, you always want to have a redundant state of mind. You always want to have a backup plan, and with your knife is no exception. I carry my main knife, which is the high carbon steel Moore Knife Garberg. This is a full tang knife. Then I have my backup knife, which is the stainless steel Moore Knife Companion HD, which is a partial tang knife. Now, both of these knives are great knives, but the Garberg is the one that I use to split all my wood when making fires and certain bushcraft or survival projects around camp. And I found that the blade length is perfect for splitting small diameter logs that I use around camp. I mentioned in the beginning of this video about an item that you could carry with you to make your survival and bushcrafting much easier. It's this little fella right here. Carrying a multi-tool in the woods, it actually opens up many more possibilities. I carry a multi-tool with a set of pliers, a saw, a knife, an awl, a can opener which I have modified with a sharpened edge, a flat screwdriver which I have sharpened for carving, and a multi-tool in the field can be invaluable. There is a certain survival television show, I'm sure you all know which one it is, in which they are only allowed to use 10 items and 90% of them bring a multi-tool. And they will tell you that it is one of their heaviest used items while they're in the field. And if something happens to your main knife, at least you will have a backup in order to carry on. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, follow, and share. Leave me a comment and let me know what kind of knife that you use when you go out into the field. I'll see you next time. God bless you.